Hello everyone, welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Uh, in the last video, we did meet a new character. His name is Sir Emmerich, and he is Lord Commander of the Ishgardian Temple Knights. He, well, it's better if I actually read what's in my uh, journal, because it actually does a better job of recapping what's happened in the last video than I could, because, you know, it's been a while. So... <clears throat> Alphano has been granted an audience with Sir Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Ishgardian Temple Knights, who will be acting as a representative of the Holy See. Keen to ingratiate himself, Alphano has asked you to accompany him to the meeting as Sir Emmerich has expressed a desire to meet the famous Warrior of Light. That's us. Minfili will surely give you her blessing once she learns of the plan, which she did. Ever since the Battle of Silvertier Skies, the city-states of Ishgard has kept her neighbors at arm's length. Not even the threat posed by the Seventh Legion was enough to coax the reclusive nation back to the negotiating table. Now, however, after two decades of near silence, they have reached out. But to what end? Regardless of Sir Emmerich's agenda, Alphano is resolved to advance his own. Travel with him to Camp Dragonhead and speak with Lord Harshafant upon your arrival. We definitely did that. We spoke with Harshafant and he set up the meeting for us. After favoring you with a few keen with a few kind words, sorry, Sir Emmerich and Alphano proceed to debate Ishgardian policies at length. Alas, the ambassador is not easily swayed, and it becomes apparent that the Holy See has no intention of rejoining the Eorzean Alliance. However, Sir Emmerich eventually reveals that he came to the meeting with a different purpose in mind. You learn that the astrologians of Ishgard have foretold the return of Midgard Sormer, the fallen guardian of Silvertier Falls, and that Sir Emmerich wishes to enlist the Scion's aid in keeping watch over the Great Worm's remains. In exchange, he will ensure that the shipments of aid from House Fortam to Revenant's Toll will continue unabated. Content with the arrangement, Alphano agrees only to learn moments after that the latest shipment has been waylaid by Icehearts and her followers. So, that's where we're at now. And basically, long story short, after we learned what the contents of the caravan were carrying, which were, you know, basic supplies as well as crystals, uh, that pretty much made Alphano put two and two together. They're stealing supplies from the caravans because they were holding crystals. Crystals are used to uh, summon primals. And in this case, the heretics that uh, follow Lady Iceheart were trying to summon, are trying to summon a primal by the name of Shiva. That's not a primal that's familiar to us, but it's familiar to those in Ishgard. Shiva being, well, as the Ishgardians put it, someone who slept well who uh slept with dragons basically so you know that's a whole other issue that i'm hoping to not get involved with because that sounds like a whole issue that the ishgardians have been dealing with for a while now but unfortunately it looks like i'm going to be meddling in their business once again but it's not really their business because it's also my business since revenant's toll needs those supplies so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and see what the plan is. Alphano has already mobilized the Crystal Braves to help in the search for Ice Hearts and their hideout, as well as the Temple Knights from Ishgard helping out with this search as well. It seems as though we are always one step behind, our quarry ever just beyond our reach. Though I would like to believe that the tables are about to turn, I must confess to having certain doubts. A joint effort may succeed where others have failed, but it could yet yield the self-same result. Fortunately, we are not without other options. I trust you haven't forgotten Inquisitor Gulaim? We have not. The mystery of how the heretic remained undiscovered for so long has been much in our thoughts, as has the question of what steps might be taken to prevent a similar breach of security in future. Accordingly, we conducted an exhaustive and covert evaluation of everyone in White's Brim Front. Though some were found to have committed certain minor transgressions, we identified only one possible heretic. 
If this man has pledged himself to Iceheart's cause, he will have been taken note of the movements of the Temple Knights and the Crystal Braves, and upon recognizing their intent, he may attempt to warn the heretics. The man's watch is to end soon, at which point he must report to Sir Jean Tremont in the yard. I would have you keep an eye on him. If he ventures beyond the walls, follow him discreetly. Should he meet with a heretic, do not interfere. Simply watch and listen. I have seen to it that the suspect knows nothing which could endanger our plans. All right. A little stealth operation. So, let's see. We'll wait here. That's our guy. The, sus the suspected heretic leaves through the southwest gate. He's heading east. He's heading south now. Oh, there's a fate nearby. But that requires a shit ton of people. We're not doing that right now. Hey, hey, where in the seven hells are you? I'm freezing my bollocks off here. I'm here, you blundering oaf. Why are you late? Standing on the wall, why else? I have duties to fulfill, you know. Your sole duty is to the... Hmm. Bloody echo. Lower your voice or they'll hear us from... Or they'll hear us in white room front. Yes, of course. The Temple Knights are in snow cloak. This is what you bring to me? We already knew about... Our comrades in Boulder Downs will use the tunnels, dead before they know what's happening. Nevertheless, if you waste my time again, is that clear? Well, damn, I couldn't make out most of what it is they were saying, but... Yep, we have our traitor. Time to report back. Wait, no, what am I doing? I can freaking tell. No, I can't teleport back. Never mind. Yeah, it's a short flight. Mind you, back in the day, we could not fly in these areas, so traveling was kind of slow. Well, did your investigation bear fruit? Ah, I think it did. I see. I shall have the man detained at once. His guilt is plain. Ha, <sighs> would that you could have heard their words more clearly. Yet, 
The few snatches you were able to make out are nonetheless enlightening. It would seem the heretics are aware of our operation and confidence that they can thwart it. Their comrades and boulder downs are key, are key to their plans, which means it is key to our plans that they be rooted out and put to the sword. We have long suspected that the heretics use a network of secret tunnels to traverse the highlands undetected. Given what you overheard, I fear that Snowcloak may be riddled with such passageways and that the heretics and Boulder Downs are planning to use them to take our forces unawares. Needless to say, we cannot allow that to happen. A, co a contingent of House Durandare Knights are on patrol in the area and I shall order them to begin searching for the heretics at once. But, knowing nothing of our enemy's numbers or, or readiness, I cannot say for sure that they will be sufficient. It would put my mind at ease if you would consent to my uh, if you would consent to assist my knights with the search. I know they would take courage from the presence of a so storied of so storied a warrior. Pray rendezvous with them at Boulder Downs. If Halone is kind, we may ha catch these heretics before their plans come to fruition. Show them no mercy, Jay. The lives of our allies are at stake. All right, let's open up the map. He said Boulder Downs. Okay. So I'll see you guys in Boulder Downs. All right, here we are. They should be right here. And oh boy, are those the House Durandare Knights that were sent to help me out? Well, that's unfortunate. Ooh, what, what do we got here? I think we found a clue. Let's head back to Jolamont and tell him what happened. My knight sent no word of your coming, Jay. What has happened? What is that in your hand? Well, I found a clue. And also the knights were dead when I got there. By the Fury, those were veterans with years of service. And now they lie dead in the snow. Their bodies must be recovered, and... No. No, we have not the men to spare. Not now. Not while Icehearts prepares to summon an abomination. The heretics you dispatched were not of sufficient number to contend with the combined strength of the Temple Knights and the Crystal Braves. There must be others, and I'll wager they are on their way to Snowcloak as we speak. To make matters worse, it seems the traitor you followed managed to pass the heretics something of value after all. The parchment you recovered is a timetable of the guardsmen's watch of, of the guardsmen's watches at our outpost in Snowcloak. The traitor was stationed there long before he aroused our suspicions. Would that we had caught him sooner. With this information, the heretics would know when the watch was weakest. They could use their tunnels with impunity and prepare their ambush. The timetable has not changed, has not changed, you see. Of course, it will be changed now, but the heretics may already be in position. House Durandare must send reinforcements, even if it means withdrawing knights from the stone vigil. I can see no other way to safeguard the lives of our allies. All right, so what are we waiting for? Time is of the essence, Jay. While my knights make ready to depart, the heretics may take our allies at Snowcloak unawares. Superior training and equipment will avail them not if they are cut down ere, the, ere their swords are drawn. But all is not yet lost. If you leave now, there may still be time to warn them. Make haste, I beseech you. Fly to Snowcloak and tell Sir Emmerich everything we have discovered. Oh, you don't gotta tell me twice. We out. Just gonna leak through the roof. 
there we go. We are out of here. All right. Jay, this is a welcome surprise. Perhaps the only one thus far. As you can see, we have yet to uncover any hidden... Wait, wait, I have a message for you. You have my gratitude. Truth be told, we suspected the heretics might be plotting such an attack. Now that we have confirmation, I shall place my knights on high alert. Has Commander Leveilleur been informed? The braves must be made aware. Where are you? Oh, he's right here. It must be here. I am certain of it. Why else would they go to such lengths to defend Snowcloak? Tis but a pity this discovery comes when our enemy has us at such a disadvantage. Forewarned though we be, though we be the heretics know the terrain far better than we. I dare not think how many are, how many are watching us at this very moment. Confound it. This is all wrong. Iceheart has us scrambling to save our own skins when we should rightly be straining every sinew to find her and stop this damnable summoning. There she is! She, wait. Come here, girl. Uh, wait. I think there's been a case of mistaken identity. Also, hi, Ida. That was close. They didn't hurt you, did they? Only my pride, Ida. There will be others nearby. We must see that they are given a similarly warm welcome. Commander Leveilleur. Oh, hey, Papa Limo. There's been a development, sir. Together with the Temple Knights, we have secured the entrances to some half dozen tunnels after spotting the enemy breaking the surface. But that's not all, sir. We think that one of them may be important. Certainly the heretics near flung themselves upon our swords to defend it. Aha! Just as I suspected, amongst this warren of tunnels lies the entrance to Iceheart's lair. Some of the others were going in. A moment, Alphano. The tunnel in question is barely wide enough for two men abreast. We cannot say with any certainty where it leads, much less what is waiting for us there. Furthermore, we have no way of knowing how many heretics are still lurking here on the surface. What if they were to converge on this point after we enter the tunnel? For all we know, we could be funneling our forces into a trap. I take your point. If the tunnel is indeed as narrow as you say, greater numbers would be more of a hindrance than a help. Should we encounter difficulty, our own allies would become an obstacle to escape. Ahem. A change of plans. While we rendezvous with Sir Emmerich and keep the heretics at bay here, you will go wherever that tunnel leads. If you find Iceheart at the end of it, do not let her escape. You venture into, un into the unknown, so see that you are prepared for anything. I suggest you call upon your allies, though not too many or Papalima will sulk. The entrance to the tunnel, sir? It's just over here. Ooh, sorry about that. Had we not seen the heretics breaking the surface, we would never have noticed it. Per Sir Emmerich's orders, we will stand guard outside. Please be aware that even should you encounter significant resistance, we cannot leave our post. Oh, and new dungeon. Now then, do I want to do this as my red mage? Do I, do I want to go in as gunbreaker? I might go in as a gunbreaker. Why not? Uh, yeah. So let's see how long the wait is going to be. See you guys inside the dungeon. All right. We're in. Ooh. So this is Snow Cloak. Looks actually pretty nice inside of here.
Uh, let's see if I can do a big pull. Why not? Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh, give me a second. All right, much better. Just had to reposition the mic. Ooh, an ice golem. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. I'm not gonna need any loot from in here, so just gonna pass on everything. <clears throat> oh, wrong way, wrong way. All right, we're good. This one might be a bit rough.
Oh shit. Okay, whoops. Oh wait, did this fight change? Oh shit, okay, so I'm going into this boss fight kind of blind. From how I remembered it, you had to push the snowballs towards him as they got bigger, but okay, this is different. All right, I guess it just got, they got rid of that mechanic altogether. Great. Two bosses down. Don't need this. Do not need this. Nope, nope. Get over here. Get over here.
Oh, well, goody. A dragon. All right, what do we got here? And ooh, great. Oh damn, Black Mage is frozen. I'd say stand behind the one that's not glowing. Yep, I was right. Oh, Black Mage is down. Oh, crap. Can we get a res for the Black Mage? There we go. Black Mage, don't stand in the... Damn. Oh, who's using their limit break? Good shit. Very nice. Well, that's another dungeon down. Now, where the hell is Lady Iceheart?
Uh, player commendation. Oh, it's just a healer that's left, so good job. I don't need that. All right, let's get out of here. The tales do not do you justice, warrior of light. Yes, I know who you are, and you know who I am. I was given the name Izel, but I earned the name Iceheart. This endless cycle of hatred, of bloodshed, of sorrow. You would see it continue, O oh noble warrior of light. I would not. I will not. I will bring an end to this war between dragon and man, no matter the cost. You mean the stuff that's happening in Ishgard right now? I mean... That does sound like a good idea if that's what you're trying to do, but... In time, you will come to understand that what we do, we do for the greater good. For Eorzea. For Hydaelyn. I'm sorry. How do you know about Hy Wait, what? No, how do you know about her? Well, things kind of got a bit more interesting and also possibly complicated. What the? Ooh. Hold on. What is that over there? Damn, there's not enough time to do that fate because the fate expires in two minutes. That's a shame. That took longer than, than I expected. What news, Jay? So Icehearts is but a pseudonym. Not that it matters. That she managed to escape is regrettable, but from your description of that beast, you did well to come as close as you did. In any case, now that you have cleared a path, the Temple Knights can begin to survey the tunnels in earnest. Mayhap they will even find a route past the ice wall. Wouldn't that do wonders for their fights against the heretics? The Crystal Braves would certainly share the credit for it too. Twelve be praised, Jay. We may yet turn this situation to our advantage. Assuming we stop Iceheart before she summons Shiva, of course. Needless to say, our fellow Scions have not been idle. Minfilia and Orion Jay have been busy pursuing, perusing the archives of House for Tom's uh, gathering what information they can they can on Shiva. Which reminds me, if you were intending to trudge back to Camp Dragonhead to report on the day's events, don't. The antecedent should be here any minute. I can only assume some people enjoy subjecting themselves to this cold. Ugh. I mean, you should have dressed for the goddamn climate change over here, bro. See, Minfilia dressed warmly. Antecedent, you come to us straight from the archives of House for Toms? I trust your time there proved fruitful. Would that it had. Urian J and I scoured countless texts, but we found but what we found was of questionable veracity. Accounts of Shiva's life and deeds are sparse and contradictory, only agreeing upon one point. She laid down with the dragon, the gravest of all sins according to the Ishgardian faith. Yet in the eyes of Icehearts followers, this was a holy act. 
the blessed union of man and dragon. How such a thing could even be possible is quite another question. Suffice it to say, I very much doubt that we will find a useful answer in the archives of House for Toms. Much knowledge has been lost over the centuries, though in this case, one wonders if it is by circumstance or design. You said that Iceheart took a moment to plead her case prior to escaping, did you not? Yes, yes I did. Hmm. Viewed without prejudice, most would agree that bringing, bringing an end to an endless war serves the greater good. I think Sir Emmerich might take issue with her methods. I do not care if a few stragglers manage to escape. Until the sappers confirm that a tunnel is safe, the men are not to search it. Yes, Lord Commander. You pursue your foes with less zeal than I had expected, Sir Emmerich. Lest you misunderstand, I do not deny that our enemy has given us good reason to be prudent. I merely meant, you being a man of faith, that I had expected a certain single-mindedness. After all, was it not by the will of Halone that your ancestors came to this land, why they took up arms against the Javanians? What would they have done in your position, I wonder? There are those who believe that faith is a renunciation of free will. That unquestioning devotion is required of all who would live a life in service to the Fury. Such righteous fervor may well serve a knight on the front line, less so a leader of men. We are all at liberty to interpret the scriptures as we will. I choose to believe that the Fury would value the lives of her followers over the deaths of her enemies. But I would not presume to speak for the Knights of Eld. This was a different time. Nay, a different era, and scripture tells us only so much. Would that it told us more. That man is awfully pragmatic for a servant of the Holy See. A welcome trait at the negotiating table, to be sure. Less so when one's enemies are making ready to harness the power of a god. Mayhap he does not truly believe that Iceheart's plan can succeed? Truth be told, I too remain somewhat skeptical. Shiva was real. A living, breathing woman. Of that there can be no doubt. In this respect, she differs from every other figure to have been summoned, each of whom was worshipped as a god. The sole exception being Good King Mogulmog XII, the myth made manifest in response to the fervent supplications of the Mogul's guard. Saint Shiva may differ, but what of the heretics? They are a tribe of outcasts at war with a mighty nation, who yearn for the resurrection of the one who embodies their beliefs. If that is not placing one's faith in a higher power, then what is? Crystals and conviction, Minfilia. They have them both in abundance. Can that truly be all that is required? My survey team has concluded a preliminary analysis of the etherites Icehearts used to escape. They believe that she teleported to another etherite, somewhere not far to the west. Despite the apparent proximity of this second etherite, however, they have been wholly unable to detect its presence directly. Unless Iceheart has some means to mask its signal, I can only presume she had it destroyed to prevent us from following her. Without the means to teleport as she did, we have no choice but to search for an alternate route, most likely a tunnel, assuming one exists. Let us not give up on teleportation just yet. One of our colleagues in Charlian may be able to assist us. I pray that you are right. I dare not think how long it will take us to survey the entire tunnel system.
While Manfilia looks into our etherite problem, I would like to request your assistance with another matter. The third unit is currently tracking the remnants of the heretic force which attacked us. However, the search goes poorly despite our numbers. Curthus is vast and Isart's followers know the terrain far better than we. Your knowledge of this region may serve to hasten the process. The sooner we capture Isart's followers, the sooner we can press them for their leader's whereabouts. Also, though it is admittedly a selfish request, I feel that my braves would benefit immensely from working alongside you. While we have our share of veterans, we also have more than a few less experienced recruits, many of whom look up to you in case you were not aware. Alright, alright, fine. Good. I knew you would understand. Yu Yu Hase can appraise you of the details. When the task is complete, come and find me at the observatorium. Captain Ilbert and I are meeting there to discuss the latest developments in his investigation. The Temple Knights shall hold Snowcloak in our absence. Let us leave them to their work. Ours is more pressing. There you are, Jay. Commander Levier instructed me to wait for you. Your assistance is most welcome, believe me. Most of the third hail from Ulda, and for a man accustomed to the feel of sand beneath his boots, the crunch of snow can be rather disconcerting. But to the matter at hand. Nary a moment ago, I received word that the heretics we seek have been spotted making for Danafin Pass. My braves are already in pursuit, and I should be grateful if you would join them. I myself shall be taking part in the hunt. Never let it be said that I do not earn my coin. Alright, go do you, sir. Let me switch back to Red Mage. There we go. And bring back my Chocobo. Alright. Let's do this thing. Alright, so they said the heretics were heading in this direction. Oh, shit. This guy is not looking too good. Dolls, balls, my ankle is on fire. Caught my boots on a rock or something and twisted it as I fell. The others went on ahead through Danifin Pass. Hurry and you might catch up. If you aren't sure where to go, look for tracks. This snow is fresh, so they shouldn't be hard to find. Alright. So, down this way. Oh, that is quite a long way. So through here, and all right, we're almost there. We're almost there. The snowstorm, though, is making my visibility kind of poor right now. I can barely see. Ah, fresh prints. Southeast. Sion, what are you doing here? The heretics? Uh, I'm not sure. There was a great scaled beast and... <coughs> Yu Hase? I think... I think he went east on his own. The heretics split up, so we did too. Coming down with the cold in the snow, sir? Oh, okay. This dude got fucked up. Chocobo, move out of the way, please. Thank you. How embarrassing. I was so intent on following the heretic's tracks that I almost failed to notice they had doubled back. Almost, mind you. One tried to sneak up behind me and got a knife in the gut for his troubles. I thought myself alone, so I started searching the dead man's knapsack for anything of interest. And lo and behold, before his friends found me, I came upon this. Withdraw in groups of three or less to the observatorium. Give the signal and wait. The merchant will be watching. Be late and be left for dead. 
speaks for itself, does it not? They can't possibly mean to rendezvous inside the place, so we should restrict our search to the surrounding areas. Let me rephrase that. You should restrict your search to the wilderness around the observatorium. I will need more than a moment's rest to recover from these wounds. All right. Ah, uh, okay, we're not far. Ahem. I am through with listening to your excuses. We leave now. How? The woods are crawling with those blue coats, and the knights are searching every wagon that passes through the gates. Well, hello, gentlemen. Well, stay well, stay with him then if you think you'll fare any better. Now now, there's no need for that. There are places like this in my homeland. Sacred snow-capped peaks where blood must not be shed. Oh, Yugiri, hey. Yet your lands ever thirst for the blood of the fallen, and by your deeds it has drunk deep. No, I have done no I have done no wrong. None but meets and secrets with heretics. Deny it all you will. We shall have the truth from you yet. Inquisitors are not the only ones skilled in the arts of interrogation. Damn it all. Yep, nice try, guys. Fancy meeting you here, Jay. I presume your work with the third brought you here brought you hither? What a tangled web. Lest you wonder, we came not not for the heretics, but for the merchants who has been conspiring with them. He came to our attention during the course of our investigation into the ivy. It beggars belief, I know, but it seems our favorite Garlean spy may have been providing assistance to Iceheart. Were it not for the efforts of Lady Yugiri and her shinobi, we might never have discovered this connection. Master Alphano is too kind. I fear my people and I have done little to aid your search for this spy. We long to strike back against the Empire and weaken their influence in this land, to prevent the tragedy which befell Doma from reoccurring. The days ahead and the work they promise will require a very particular set of skills. Skills which I am fortunate enough to possess. If you will allow it, I would accompany you until the investigation is complete. That is a most generous offer, Lady Yugiri, and one which I gladly accept. Thank you. Though I may disappear for a time, know that I shall never be far and always be watching. A comforting thought. Come, Jay, let us wait inside for Captain Ilbert to return and deliver his report. All right, let's head in. Captain Ilbert seemed confident that the merchant's resolve would swiftly crumble when pressed. If so, we should have new information ere long. As to whether it will bring us any closer to learning the Ivy's identity, I would rather not say. Given our adversary's cunning, I shall consider us fortunate if we are spared another wild dodo chase. The gods know we have more than enough to occupy our time as it is. But before we take care of that, give me one second, guys. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to take care of a little something, but let's go ahead and continue. Captain Ilbert, you report, if you will. Aye, Commander. Firstly, with regard to the heretic we captured, I regret to say that the man could tell us not that we did not already know of Shiva. 
We have since handed him over to the Ishgardian authorities. Henceforth, the Holy See will pursue the matter independently. Our inquiries concerning the ivy, however, have proven more fruitful. We have ascertained the channel by which the heretics acquired their information of, on the shipment's routes. Go on. You will recall the flame we first, the, we first identified as being the ivy's employ. From him, we were able to trace a trail of conspirators, each taking us closer to his master. Alas, the trail came to an abrupt end. Fearing that the investigation had been compromised, we took the necessary step of detaining all suspected of conspiracy. There were five on our list, including a flame stationed at Revenant's Toll. The man's primary duty was to keep an inventory of donations from abroad, the particulars of which he would share with the benefactors, thereby ensuring that needs did not go unfulfilled. By virtue of his role, he was privy to the details of all shipments bound for the, set bound for the settlement. Needless to say, that included those originating from House Fort Toms. He knew the precise routes the caravan would take, and he sold that information to a merchant. I think I can guess which one. None other. With that little encouragement, he soon confessed to knowingly aiding and abetting the heretics. Well, that is one mystery solved, at least. But what of the ivy? Are we any close to, pri to prizing off his mask? I dare say we are, Commander. Our relentless pursuit has forced him to commit a grave error. In a desperate bid to cover his tracks, the Ivy resorted to ex exercising certain administrative powers available only to high-ranking members of the Immortal Flames. If you consider then that our investigation is known to barely a handful of them, the field of suspects is greatly narrowed. You mean to say that the agent is among Raban's innermost circle? Someone who has been with him since the Immortal Flames establishment? Tis the most plausible explanation. The infiltration likely occurred during the company's founding, with the groundwork for the act being laid beforehand. To slip into a position of authority unremarked and remain above suspicion for all these years. I, I too was surprised, though I really should not have, although I really should not have been. Of the three grand companies, Uldaz was ever the more vulnerable to infiltration. Both Limsalomensa and Gridania had long-standing armed forces that lent themselves well to the formation of the Maelstrom and the Order of the Twin Adder. To all intents and purposes, it was the same people, loyal ones, mind, under the same leadership. Only the banner was different. Not so the flames. Uldaz's military was made up of desperate orders, most of which were glorified mercenary companies that answered only to their own paymasters. Hardly an ideal environment in which to establish something as high-minded as a grand company. The difficulties Raban faced when founding the Immortal Flames are well known. Even after he had convinced his fellow syndicate members to share the cost, there remained the small matter of finding enough bodies to fill the ranks. Indeed, and given the pressing nature of the Imperial threats, that meant recruiting every passing sellsword. Amidst the chaos of its founding, it would have been child's play to infiltrate the company. A good deal easier than now, I. The Immortal Flames have ever been caught between conflicting interests, the public and the private. Though the monetarists ultimately agreed to support the organization's founding, it was not out of charity that they did so, but simple self-preservation. Had Nail Van Darnus's ambitions been any less apocalyptic, you may be sure that they would never have risked supplying Raban with an army. Tis but a wonder they did not attempt to extinguish the flames the moment the danger had passed. Ahem, returning to the present. Even as we speak, our Doman allies are shadowing several high-ranking flames, any one of whom could be the Ivy. Desiring to deal a blow against the Empire, the refugees were eager to lend us their aid. I expect to hear from them ere long. Very good. Pray continue your investigation with the first. Meanwhile, have the second attend to the unrest. The third can join the fourth in inspecting crystal shipments. If they notice anything unusual, I want to know about it. 
If Shiva is summoned in like manner to the other primals, the heretics will be looking for further supplies. Understood, Commander. I shall send word to Sir Emmerich informing him of our success in identifying the heretics' abitors. Hopefully, the information will be of some use to the Ishgardians. It is time, Commander. Yes, I am aware. An emergency council of the Alliance leadership has been called. There have been developments in Garlemald, it would seem. As Commander of the Crystal Braves, my presence has been, has been requested. I would have you accompany me, Jay. As the realm's stoutest champion, it is only me... It's tis only meet that you be present for the discussion. Oh, and the antecedent has already given her consent, lest you worry. Oh, goody, another meeting. Like me, you are doubtless eager to conclude our business with Iceheart, but until another path to her sanctum is found, she will remain beyond our reach. Minfilia and the Archons are sparing no efforts to secure an alternate route. Until such time as they succeed, I suggest we give some thoughts to the realm's other problems. I shall go on ahead to Gridania in readiness for the coming council. Meet, at, meet me at Novika's altar and we shall make our way to the Lotus Stand together. Alright, let's see what this meeting is about. They said that there is developments in Garlemald, so wonder what happened. Where are you? My thanks for coming, Jay. When you are ready, speak with the conjurer yonder. She will show us to the lotus stand. All right. Change has come to the Garlean Empire and we must discuss the implications. The rumors are true then? The war of succession is ended. It is. A new emperor reigns in Garlemald. Who? The birth and all too rapid expansion of the Garlean Empire is commonly attributed to the strategic brilliance of Solus Zosgalvis, yet he did not rule alone. Several members of the royal household also distinguished themselves during his reign. Nevertheless, it was the eldest son who stood to inherit the throne until his most untimely passing. I thought us fortunate when I learned that the Emperor had died without naming a successor. Would that the Garlean Empire had died with him. Was the grandson and his uncle who had the strongest claims, was it not? Indeed, yet claims count for little without the power to assert them. High Legatus Varus Ye Galvis is a respected military leader, not so his uncle. So oh, young Varus has torn the crown from his uncle's grasp and taken his place at the head of the Empire.
Given the troubled nature of his succession, the new emperor will require time to seal his grip on power. Yet have no doubt but that he shall, for there are none left with strength enough to oppose him. Since the success of Operation Archon, the remnants of the 14th Legion and the forces occupying Alamigo have done naught but fortify their positions. But you can be sure they'll be ready to march on us again, if their Emperor gives the word. When, not if. They say this Varus was so set upon Eorzean annexation that he spoke out against the Meteor Project. Plainly, the new Emperor's intentions are of great concern to us all. I propose that we set aside the Cartano dispute for the present, and discuss what measures the Alliance might take to prepare for a resumption of hostilities with Garlemald. Moreover, I move that we re-examine the question of how our former allies in Ishgard might be persuaded to retake their place at our side. Could Eorzea but stand as one, twould deal a grave blow to our enemy's ambitions. Well, I suppose we should be grateful that they have finally acknowledged the inevitability of Imperial attack. Who knows? They may even do something about it. If only the leaders of Ishgard would follow their example, and stop hiding behind their gates, praying for the coming storm to pass them by. But that is a discussion for another time. At present, I am more concerned by the fact that the Alliance's mooted preparations will be made known to the Garleans many moons before their coming. So long as the Ivy eludes our grasp, no secret is safe. Well, damn, so Garlemald has a new emperor, so we might be getting a visit from the uh, Empire again pretty soon, most likely. It will not have it will not have escaped your notice that the nations of Eorzea are no nearer to being of one purpose, despite their protestations to the contrary. Plainly, the threats of a resurgent Garlemald is not enough to stir them. And the reason for this? deep-rooted mistrust against amongst the citizenry. The nation's leaders can come to all the understandings they like, but their unity means little and less to their common folk. Take the Lumincents, for instance. Though Admiral Merlwib outlawed piracy over a decade ago, foreigners still picture the nation as a haven for grog-swilling wooden-legged cutthroats. And likewise, the Gridanians are mocked as hermits who talk to trees, and the Uldans scorned as swindlers who worship coin. Not that such sentiments are entirely without grounds, of course. Take that pillar of Uldan society, Teleji Adeleji, for example. But that is beside the point. The fact is that the people are wary of outsiders whether they have cause to be or not. On that basis, one could argue that the conflict at Kartno is a necessary evil. Each nation has its own warmongering faction that advocates the, the acquisition of Omega. In order to play say to them, we present them something resembling warfare and thereby curb their appetites for full-scale conflict. But enough idle musing. Let us speak of a more pressing matter, the Ivy. Since we spoke at the observatorium, Captain Ilbert has further shortened his list of suspects. And by happy coincidence, the one he deems the most likely candidate is lately come to Gridania. Wait, they were here? The hunt nears its end, Jay. 
All that remains is to corner our quarry. Seek out Ilbert near the Adder's Nest. He will give you the particulars. Should there be any developments in Corthus, you may be sure that I will send word without delay. In the meantime, I wish you success in apprehending the ivy. Oh, no, I don't need to do all that. We'll just teleport over here. Where are you? My thanks for coming, Scion. Doubtless the commander has informed you, but we have unmasked the ivy. From this point on, we must proceed with extreme caution. Alright, I'm with it. But I think that will be it for this video. We are clocked in at about over an hour again. So that's unfortunate. I thought I could make it a bit shorter. But that is fine. So, as far as the situation with uh, Ice Hearts, or at this point, her real name is Izael, that's going to come to a halt for the time being until we can actually figure out where to find her. Because where she teleported off to, we can't exactly teleport there ourselves because she most likely destroyed the other Aetherites to prevent us from following her. So, that we'll deal with another time. Garlemald has a new empire, not empire, emperor. Sorry, they have a new emperor now, so that means they'll be marching on Eorzea again pretty soon, most likely. So that has the Eorzean alliance pretty worried. And as far as the ivy is concerned, I believe Ilbred has managed to find who the ivy was, considering the fact that the ivy apparently was in the meeting with us. So we'll deal with that in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more updates on the channel. And hopefully we'll be done with A Realm Reborn soon, hopefully. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.